Welcome to the Untold Histories podcast, where we dive deep into fascinating stories from the past. I'm your host, and today we're exploring a topic that might surprise you. We'll be talking about atheism in Islam. Today we delve deeper into the life and work of one such thinker, Ibn al-Rawandi, a controversial figure whose rationalistic and critical stance towards religion continues to provoke discussions among scholars. In the history of Islam, it's intriguing to learn that the concept of atheism was acknowledged by Muslim scholars since the early Middle Ages. Although individuals were not specifically labeled as atheists, non-believers faced strong criticism from the religious community. Rather than using the term atheists, those accused of denying religious beliefs were often seen as heretics. However, amidst this backdrop, there were bold thinkers who openly challenged religious dogma. One such figure was Ibn al-Rawandi, a prominent Islamic theologian of the 9th century. Ibn al-Rawandi, whose full name is Abu al-Hasan Ahmad ibn Yahya ibn Ishaq al-Rawandi, belonged to the Mutazila school of thought initially. Yet, he diverged from its teachings and went on to write works that presented critical objections not only against Mutazila theology, but also against Islam and religions as a whole. It's worth noting that Ibn al-Rawandi was not alone in his skepticism. Other notable voices emerged from within the Islamic world. For instance, there was the physician and philosopher Abu Bakr al-Razi, who lived between 865 and 925. Al-Razi challenged religious notions and advocated for a rational approach to understanding the world. His thought-provoking ideas undoubtedly raised eyebrows among his contemporaries. Another fascinating figure was the poet Al-Ma'ari, who lived from 973 to 1057. Al-Ma'ari boldly declared that religion was nothing more than a tale invented by the ancients. His critical stance led him to express the belief that there were two types of people, those with brains but no religion, and those with religion but no brains. Such strong words undoubtedly shook the foundations of traditional religious thinking. Back to Ibn al-Rawandi. His books and writings, unfortunately, have come down to us only through fragments and quotations found in works composed to refute them. Despite their controversial status, their impact on subsequent generations cannot be ignored. Ibn R. Rawandi gained significant recognition for his book titled The Book of the Emerald, or Kitab al-Zumurud. In this work, his rationalistic and critical approach towards religion takes center stage. Although we don't have the complete original composition, thanks to the efforts of different writers who meticulously reconstructed the book from fragments found in older literature, we can grasp the essence of Ibn al-Rawandi's ideas. The book was divided into three main parts, each presenting a distinct line of argumentation. In the first part, Ibn al-Rawandi emphasizes the primacy of reason over revelation. He boldly states, It is certain that reason is the greatest bounty of God. By questioning the necessity of religious messengers to confirm what human reason itself can confirm, for example, our judgments about good and evil, obligations and prohibitions, he challenges the authority of religious figures and calls into question the need for their teachings. For him, if reason and our ability to think logically has already provided us with answers, their presence becomes redundant. The second part of the book presents a series of criticisms against Islam, and it is likely here that Ibn al-Rawandi's words had the most blasphemous impact on Orthodox Muslims of his time. He targets Islamic ritual practices and launches sharp attacks against the doctrine of Prophet Muhammad's miracles. These miracles, considered early on as crucial evidence of Muhammad's prophethood, were at the center of theological debates in the 9th century. Ibn al-Rawandi questions the absence of angels during the Battle of Uhud, where Muhammad was left wounded amidst the fallen, asking why they didn't come to his aid. In this part, he also critiques the Quran itself, claiming that the language of ancient Arabic poets surpasses it. His audacity reaches its peak as he asserts that there are linguistic errors within the Quran. Furthermore, Ibn al-Rawandi challenges Islamic traditions and the concept of ijma, 
which means consensus of the community, arguing that they hold no value in legal interpretation. He exposes the limited number of Muslims in agreement on religious matters compared to the vastness of other religious communities, rendering these traditions and consensus meaningless. The third and final part of the Book of the Emerald challenges the prevailing notion that humans received music, astronomy, and languages from God through prophetic instruction. By engaging in arguments and counter-arguments between representatives of the Hindu Brahmins and the Muslims, Ibn al-Rawandi aims to dismantle the belief in the divine origins of human abilities. Ibn al-Rawandi fearlessly expressed his ideas and opinions with freedom, which he included in his writings. He prioritized reason over blind adherence to religious teachings, making Islam and its laws the subject of his scrutiny. In doing so, he sought to refute miracles and the divinity of the Quran, denying the existence of angels and anything that couldn't be comprehended through reason. The writings of Ibn al-Rawandi that exist today may have been taken out of context, and it is certain that the complete content is not available. Nevertheless, Despite the disappearance of his original works, most likely intentionally, the scattered writings attributed to him, found in other books written in response to him, have played a significant role in shaping our understanding of this man. Today, he is recognized as one of the most prominent free thinkers in Islamic history. Join me next time as we continue to unveil hidden stories from the past. Remember, history is more than what we've been taught. It's a treasure trove of untold narratives waiting to be discovered. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment.